I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. Today we're talking zippers, so lots of zipper tips for you. I think um, sewing enthusiasts sometimes get stuck on zippers. I want to show you today how to do two of the most common ones and you know guide you through the steps and make it easy for you. Let's talk about zipper feet for just a, just a minute here before we get started because there are a wide variety available. I'll be using a few different ones but today I'm going to use the standard ordinary um, comes with most machines snap on zipper foot. Snaps on to the right or to the left and then you may also be um, aware of a sliding zipper foot which is uh, also used for cording and for piping and then you may um, have seen other zipper feet that uh, a little bit different style this one is a narrow base so today we're going to use the, the standard one let's talk about a few different notions and, and how you um, want to get started first of all pick a good quality zipper um, a good quality zipper is going to last farther than the life of the garment. You're not going to have to worry about, you know, pulling and tugging on it. Um, our polyester zippers, like the ones I'm using here, are very, very strong and very high quality. Make sure you use high quality polyester thread as well. You always want to use polyester when you're um, sewing zippers into garments and things that's going to get a lot of, a lot of wear and tear. And then for uh, putting the zipper in place, there is something that I will sometimes use, and that is a, a basting tape. This is a wash away basting tape. And it's a double-sided sticky, so it'll stick to the zipper and to the garment, and you just simply peel it away, and when you're done, you wash it. Today, I'm using a few different things, which you'll see as I go along. Interfacing. This is one of the most crucial, crucial parts of installing a zipper. You always want to interface the entire area where the zipper is going to be, and I'll show you a little bit more of that when we, when we sit down. But when I do that, if you notice on this one here, I've got a little bit of a pinked edge. So I love to use my pinking shears to just trim that edge, and you may be wondering why. Well, it feathers the edge so that from the right side, it doesn't show a hard line. So I always do that. Use a fusible, use it um, that, that full length. The other big, huge tip that's really important is to always choose a zipper that is longer than what you need. So you're going to see how I sew it here today, and you're going to see all the method to my madness here. So we're going to do two zippers today. We're going to do a standard slotted zipper, which is this one here, and then we're going to do a lap zipper, which is one of my favorites. So move over to the machine, and let's get started. So I always want a zipper that's at least two inches longer than my actual opening. So this is a nine inch zipper. I need a seven inch opening. So I've already marked it. And then what I would want to do is lay this on my, I'm using little uh, miniature skirts today so that you can see what I'm doing. I would lay it on the seam line and I would mark that stopping point. And then I would simply, um, so I'm going to just do that with a pin today. Didn't grab my, my marker, so. So you can see that's where my length of zipper is. That's where the stopper is. I'm going to pin that just below the stopper, OK? And then with my regular standard zipper foot on, I'm going to sew a regular standard seam. I would want that to be a 5 8 inch seam. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it a little bit um, for this one here. I want to back tack there. I'm going to sew up to that stopping point. And I'm going to stop. I always remove my pins before I get to them. And then now I'm going to back tack again. And as soon as I get back to that stopping point, I'm going to switch to a basting stitch. So that just simply means I'm going to go the longest length possible, and I'm going to finish out that seam. OK? I'm going to leave a tail at the end. And that's going to make it easier for me to take out those basting stitches. OK, so the next step. The next step is to secure one side of the, remember we're doing a slotted zipper, one side to the seam allowance and then the opposite side. Now, traditionally, I'm going to tell you how a lot of people do this. They simply close up the zipper, lay it on the wrong side along the open seam, and you do want to press your seam open. I forgot to mention that. And then they either um, pin it in, base, in place or baste it in place. But what most people do is they do that with the zipper closed. And my method is a little bit different. Now, and I'll tell you my reasoning behind this. I like to do it with the zipper open. That way, I can literally place my coils right along the seam line. So my seam line is right there where I'm pointing to. 
And that way, you, you actually leave yourself just a, just a hair of space so that when the zipper is closed, it hides it more, more fully. So I left my hand needle and basting in here just to show you how I did that side. I would just simply take long stitches in and out. Another option would be to use the, the basting tape that I showed you. Uh, I don't recommend machine basting this though. You want a little bit more control so that when you're setting both of those sides of the zipper tape in, you want them to just, the coils to just touch and then touch right on the seam line. So when they're closed up, they're gonna close up just a little bit tighter, but like I said, just that little bit of hair amount. So it's gonna, it's gonna make um, the zipper close really, really nicely. So again, my, my first sample, all I did was sew my seam. Let me get that piece again so you could see it. Sew my seam, press that open, and then once that's pressed open, I'm able to take my zipper, lay it face down, and I'm gonna wanna secure that to each seam allowance. So I would open it up, lay it along that seam line, and then that's where I would baste that. So I would baste one side, and then I would baste, close that up and baste the other side, okay? So now I'm ready to top stitch from the top. And you may wonder why I have this string. It just makes that easier to close up so you don't have to um, get your fingers in there and, and reach really hard. So that, like I said, this would normally be, you know, how you would lay it on. It's just my method of having the coils open gives just a little bit more room there for when we, we actually sew it. And you'll see, again, you'll see the method to my madness. Okay, so we're done with those steps. The next step then is I am ready to actually mark it on this one here. I want a, um, a, about a quarter of an inch chalk mark from the seam and I would mark that. And I wanna give you some tips on marking. Um, you could thread baste this if you wanted to, if it was something that you couldn't wash out. If it's a washable fabric, then definitely use a wash away marker or a wash away chalk, whatever's gonna show up on your fabric. I like to use a little trick. I like to use a quilter's quarter inch marker and I will lay that right along the seam and I will chalk in my line like that and then I would repeat that for, for the other side. So let me show you the one that I've already done that to. So again, we'll just go through the steps. That has been, um, this one in particular, I didn't hand baste. I wanted you to see what it's like if you use the tape so you don't have any, um, any hand basting there. It's just basically glued in place from that double-sided sticky tape. And then I've got my uh, side marked, so I'm ready to stitch. So I'm gonna switch to a standard snap-on zipper foot now, and take the regular zipper foot off. I'm gonna snap this onto the left. And if you remember, I ended with a basting stitch. So I wanna go back here now. I'm on basting, I'm gonna go now to a standard stitch length, and I actually wanna go just a little longer than usual, so I'm gonna go to three. And I'm gonna get this lined up right on this side. Make sure your threads are smooth underneath there. Okay. Needle down, and I can do a couple things here. I wanna go right along this chalk mark line. So I could follow the foot in a particular spot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the guideline marker and I wanna move it over so that it's right along the center of the seam line there. Right there, so hopefully you can see that little bit of that, that red line. And now I am ready to sew. Now if you don't get right on your, I'm gonna reverse there a little bit. If you don't get right on your chalk mark, that's okay. You could go a little, a little wider. About a quarter of an inch is, is pretty much standard. You could go a little closer if you want to. Now when you get down to the bottom, so you see I'm just using that guideline to um, follow along the center of the seam. That's gonna help me stay straight on both sides because the main thing is I want this to be even. You wanna make absolutely sure that your stopper um, is above the line that you've drawn. So that line should be just a little bit below where the stopper is. I'm using a knee lift on this machine. It just gives me both hands free. And I usually count the stitches, so I had three on that side. I'm gonna have three on this side. Pivot around there, 
And again, now sometimes you want to just scoot that over just a hair. Not all stitches form exactly the same on your, and then on your, you know, uh, fabric as you're feeding. I'm going to guide that center line out right along there again. And again, this is something that if you wanted to, you could baste. I like to just um, raise that up a little bit. If you're a fussy stitcher, which sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not, today I want to do this a little quickly, then I will actually sew one side from top to bottom, pivot around, and then sew the other one from top to bottom. Okay? All right, so that one's done. Now all that remains is to pull out that basting stitch and we are good to go. All right, let's move on to the next zipper. And again, I've done the same thing. I've marked it, marked the zipper, sewn the seam, basted it the exact same way. And then my next step is that I'm basting only one side and I'm gonna unzip this and with all of the skirt and the seam allowances all to the right side, I'm gonna now sew right along that zipper teeth. And when I get to there, I'm going to have to stop, so I'll backstitch that. Okay. And we'll just cut that thread. Okay, so I've got that one side done. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do for this lap zipper is literally just roll this. So I've got a little um, extension area here. Mm, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch, but a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. So I've already got that one on here. Okay, and what I've done there is I have then gone back again underneath. The beauty of this foot is it rides right along the coils. There's a groove on the underside of this foot, and I would just straight stitch. I'll do a little bit of it that I've already done right down that area. Okay, so I've already done that the whole length. The next step, I'm going to literally open that up and open it out flat, and I'm going to go back now from the wrong side and I'm going to I'm going to baste again with the groove of the foot riding along the groove of the zipper I'm going to baste all the way down what that gives me is a perfect line on the outside for basting so that I'm ready to go now and to complete it so that it looks like this I would just simply change my stitch length if I had it on basting I'd change back to a normal stitch length and I can use that same idea with the, with the guideline marker. And now I'm going to stitch to the right or to the left of that basting line. And when I'm done, that gives me a, a perfect guide, by the way. And when I'm done, I would just simply take out that basting stitch. I've got my regular length stitch. And I'm going to do something, just another little trick here that I like to show you. I did not back stitch in this area. I like to pull my threads to the underside, hand tie them in a knot, and then it's neat, neatly finished. Take out that basting stitch, take out the basting that you had in the center seam, just like you did for the slotted, and you have a beautiful lap zipper. Why do I have the pin? That's to keep me from, because I'm going to cut this excess off when I sew my waistband, that's to keep me from accidentally zipping that zipper off. So I hope this has shown you a couple really quick and easy ways to do two common zippers, slotted zipper, lap zipper. It's easy and we'll give you complete instructions on the website.